Welcome back to McMaster University course Computer Science 1JC3 Introduction to Computational Thinking. Today we're going to start a new topic entitled Numbers. We're going to begin with a case study. This is about the Ariane 5. The Ariane 5 is a launch vehicle that was used by the European Space Agency. You can see a picture there of it on the right. Uh, on its first test flight in 1996, uh, this rocket was shot up and ex exploded. The result was a loss of $500 million for both the rocket and the cargo that it was carrying. So the Ariane 5 was a big project. It was, took 10 years to develop. It cost $7 billion. So why did this rocket blow up? The rocket blew up because a number represented as a 64-bit floating point number was converted to a 16-bit machine integer. So you can see we went from 64 bits to 16 bits. So there was some loss of information and this ultimately what caused the software error. But actually the software error was really caused by a lack of good software engineering. The module that did this conversion was written for the Ariane 4, and it was reused for the Ariane 5, but it was never retested for the Ariane 5. The Ariane 5 had different requirements than the Ariane 4. So this is a fundamental development flaw. And the reason I'm talking about the Ariane 5 disaster is it shows that software developers, computer scientists, software engineers, they must have a detailed understanding of how numbers are represented. It is a crucial subject. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this topic. So, so let's uh, talk a bit about um, number systems. There are various kinds of number systems. Um, Actually, there are many kinds of number systems, and number systems are, and I should say, number. the idea of a number in general is one of the most important ideas in mathematics. You can see how mathematics has developed by seeing how mathematicians have progressively thought about numbers in deeper and more expansive ways. So we have a lot of number systems. The ones that you're probably familiar with are here, the natural numbers. These are the numbers for counting and ordering. And notice that we're starting with zero. Sometimes people will start with one. Uh, logicians and computer scientists almost always start with zero. Zero is more convenient for their purposes. We can also have the integers. The integers are for counting forwards and backwards. And then we have the rational numbers. They are for measuring. Uh, notice we represent the rational numbers with the letter Q. The integers are represented with the letter Z or Z because this comes from the German word Zahl, which means number. And then we have the system of real numbers these are for solving geometric problems. A simple example is this problem. If this side and this side have length 1, then we know this side has length square root of 2. And that square root of 2 is not a rational number. In order to deal with this, solve this geometric problem, we need real numbers. And then we have complex numbers. They're for solving algebraic problems. And final, the final set, uh, system I want to talk about are modular integers, where we have a whole set of these, one for every n greater than or equal to 1. So let me, um, in case you don't know about, about modular numbers, let me mention how they work. They work like, basically, clock arithmetic works. So let's say, let's say I had 
uh, z6. So I'll start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice I have six different digits there. These are the six numbers. So Z6 is just six numbers. Now when I count, so let's say I wanted to count up to eight, I would go, I go from here to here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So basically, when I count to eight, I go around the clock, around the circle, and get back to two. That's because if I take eight and divide by six and look at the remainder of that, it's two. So that's how clock arithmetic works. Um, I showed you how you do counting. Addition and multiplication work the same way. I'll erase this too. So let's say I was going to I was going to add, let's say add three plus five. Now the answer we'd hope we would get would be two, because we just know if we count to eight we get two. So I go one. I count one, two, three, plus one, two, three, four, five. We get two. So this equals two in Z6. And sometimes this is written as three plus five is equivalent to two mod 6. That's how it's often written in mathematics. So that's what clock arithmetic is. Uh, we're going to see clock arithmetic is very important to computing in a moment when we talk about what um, machine integers are. I shouldn't say in a moment, but later in this topic when we talk about what machine integers are and how they're uh, represented. So let's go back to this. And let's clean up this a bit. So we have these different families of numbers, number systems, and I want to emphasize there are other number systems as well that are useful, that do come up in computing. But these are the most common ones. Notice that um, we have this set of inclusions. The modular integers are, are always going to be a subset of the natural numbers which are a subset of the integers, which are a subset of the rationals, which are a subset of the reals, which are a subset of the complex numbers. And you know that complex numbers uh, are a subset of quaternions, and quaternions are a subset of octonions. You can also say the natural numbers are a subset of the ordinals. The or ordinals are a subset of the surreal numbers. So there's lots of other systems here. All these number systems are noted because they have an addition and a multiplication. Okay, so what we're going to do now is talk about a different kind of system, which are called numeral systems. Now, I'm, I'm mentioning numeral systems because people often confuse numerals with numbers. They, are, they use them interchangeably. Like, for instance, someone will write down They'll say something like this. Um, 2, 3, 6. And they'll say that. They'll say that is a number. And then they'll say that number has three digits. As soon as they say that number has three digits, they're not being precise. 2, 3, 6 is not a number. It's a numeral that represents a number. It represents the number 236. But it's a numeral, and as a numeral, it has three digits. So, so numerals are, so a numeral system is just as a writing system for expressing numbers, and we usually use numeral systems for integers and rational numbers. And I want to mention probably the two most important 
uh, numeral systems that we run into, though there are many numeral systems throughout history. The first one is Roman numerals, which we use today. And in the Roman numerals, we have some letters from the Roman alphabet, I, V, X, L, C, D, and M. And then we have um, these, these letters represent values, and we have some rules for how we put these letters together, these symbols. So for instance, if I was going to write down uh, 40, let's say 46, I'd write down like this. where this means 10 less than 50, 10 less than 50, and this means 5 plus 3 ones. So this is 46, to give you an idea. Okay, so that's the Roman numerals. Now, what's really important about the Roman numerals is they were invented by the Romans. And the Romans had a great empire that went on for hundreds of years and came apart in the uh, 400s or so. And even though the Roman Empire fell apart in the 400s, its impact remained in Europe for hundreds of years after that. Um, and so Roman numerals were actually used in Europe until some, something like the 1400s or 1500s. So they were used until the Renaissance. And as you know, in the Renaissance, it was a rebirth of new ideas, new ways of thinking about the world, new ways of thinking about art, and so forth. So that's the Roman numeral system. The system we use today is called the Hindu Arabic numeral system. This is a system based on the number 10, but it could be based on um, any number. We use the base 10, but we could use base 2, base 28. It could be the same system works for any base. Now, this system is called the Hindu Arabic numeral system because it was developed by Hindu scholars in India, but it was later adopted by Arab mathematicians who really learned how to put this to use. And it was introduced to Europe largely by someone named Leonardo of Pisa. He's more famously known as Fibonacci. He's the man who introduced the Fibonacci numbers. And he wrote a book called Liber Abaci. You may think that means the book of the abacus. It does not mean that. It means a book of calculation. He showed how to use the Hindu Arabic numeral system to do calculation. And over time, this move through Europe and replace the Roman numeral system. So the Roman numeral system, if you think about it, it's perfectly fine for writing down uh, numbers, expressing numbers. But it, once you want to, if you want to take these expressions of numbers and do arithmetic with them, it is very unsuited to that. You know, just write down two big Roman numerals and multiply them together and do it all in Roman numerals. It, it is a it's a gigantic pain. Okay, so those are numeral systems. And now I want to talk about a very great mathematician, Muhammad al-Khwarizmi. And I'm going to ask you a question. Who was this guy? Who was Muhammad al-Khwarizmi? You have four choices. Um, I will give you a moment, stop your video, think about it, then come back with an answer. Okay, now that you're back, who was this guy? Well, A is correct. He was called algorithmi. In, in texts written in Latin, this is how people refer to this man. By the way, this I don't think this is a real picture of him. Uh, he lived quite a long time ago. Um, uh, he was born in Uzbekistan. Uh, so, the second thing is also true. He helped spread the use of the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, 
He is really one of the founders of algebra. We're interested in him for a number of reasons, and one reason is algebra is crucial for, is a, provides a way to do computation in mathematics. And the third thing is he spent most of his time at the House of Wisdom. We can say a little bit about that. So he was, he was born roughly in 780 and lived roughly to 850. And as I said, he spent most of his time at the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. So this was a library and a research center. This is where uh, Islamic scholars collected manuscripts and studied them and in many ways, many times, took the ideas and expanded and improved them. Many of these manuscripts were from ancient Greece. And what's crucial about what they did is they, the knowledge that the ancient Greeks had produced, they not only preserved, they expanded. Now, um, one of the things he did is he took the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, which we've already talked about, and he worked out the arithmetic of using this system to do with things like addition and multiplication. And his method was called algorithm. And today we've derived from his method the word algorithm. So algorithm goes back to him. It basically goes back to his name, algorithmi. And another thing he did was he wrote books in algebra and he provided an exhaustive account of how to solve all linear and quadratic equations. Now, this may seem trivial to you now, it wasn't trivial then. So he showed how to solve all linear equations. A linear equation would be something like this. And a quadratic equation would be something like this. So he show, so showed how to solve all of those. Now, you may think, well, there's only one of them, but there's different cases, like for here, uh, A could be negative, it could be positive, B could be negative, positive, B could be zero. So there's various different cases. He showed how to solve all of them, and he proved his results using geometry. So what was important that's going on here is that if you look at Greek philosophy, Greek mathematics. Greek mathematics is all based on geometry. They really didn't have algebra. They weren't very good at computation. So they, but they understood a lot of mathematics in a geometric way. So he developed an algebraic way to solve these problems and he justified it using geometry. And in the title of his book, we have the word algebra and that's where algebra comes from. Um, so there have been many great mathematicians in the history of mathematics, but al Khwarizmi stands as one of the very important mathematicians, had a huge influence on the direction of mathematics. And because of his work in algebra and his work in the arithmetic using Hindu Arabic numeral system, this knowledge eventually got to Europe and it caused a, a huge flourishment of mathematics in Europe during the late Middle Ages and, and from then on, late Middle Ages till today. Okay, so, so yes, we're going to stop right here. Uh, we'll begin, as you can see here, we're going to talk about uh, the de difference between decimal and binary as, as um, number systems and as, well, as number systems next time. Okay, so th thank you.